Welcome to the Tigers News. I'm Alexis Richer. As always, we thank you for making us part of your day for the news we've been kept checking on for you. Nine people were sent to the hospital Monday morning after an active shooter was reported on campus. The Columbus Fire Department said shortly after the school sent a series of tweets telling students to shelter in place and to run, hide, fight. Early reports stated that the one suspect was killed and two others were apprehended. Two of those people are in stable condition, the department said. It's had no information on the other five people. Around 10 a.m., the, the university's emergency management department tweeted, quote, Buckeye alert, active shooter on campus, run, hide, fight. Watts Hall, 19th and College, end quote. Watts Hall is a material science and engineering building. President-elect Donald Trump claimed without evidence Sunday that millions voted illegally in the national election, scoffing at Hillary Clinton's nearly two million edge in the popular vote and returning to his campaign mantra of a rigged race, even as he prepares to enter the White House in less than, five, in less than two months. Trump and his lieutenants assailed in efforts, now joined by Clinton, to recount votes in up to three battleground states, calling, calling the push fraudulent, the work of crybabies. The president-elect himself launched a Twitter offensive that spanned more than 12 hours on Sunday, casting a shadow over the legitimacy of an election that he actually won. There's been no indication of widespread vote manipulation, illegal voting, or hacking that materially affected the outcome one way or the other. It's that very lack of evidence that suggests Trump is likely to prevail in recounts. Fidel Castro, who led his bearded rebels to victorious revolution in 1959, embraced Soviet-style communism and defied the power of ten U.S. presidents during his half-century of rule in Cuba, has died at age 90. Castro's death was cheered by thousands of Cuban Americans, many of whom were forced to leave Cuba under Castro's dictatorship. Castro's reign over the over the island nation, 90 miles from Florida, was marked by the U.S.-backed Bay of, ba Bay of Pigs invasion in 1961 and the Cuban Missile Crisis a year later that brought the world to the brink of nuclear war. Castro, was outlast who outlasted a crippling U.S. trade embargo, as well as dozens, possibly hundreds, of assassination plots, died 10 years after a life-threatening illness led him to turn over power to his brother. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers says it has no plans for forcible removal of protesters who have been camping in North Dakota to protest the Dakota Access oil pipeline. The Corps says in, state, in a statement Sunday that it is, quote, seeking a peaceful and orderly transition to a safer location, end quote. The Corps notified tribal leaders Friday that all federal lands north of the Cannonball River will be closed to public access December 5th for, quote, safety concerns, end quote. The agency says those who choose to stay do so at their own risk. The Corps says anyone on the property north of the Cannonball River after that date will be trespassing and subject to prosecution. Thanksgiving weekend shoppers picked up hot toys, TVs, and new Apple products, buying both online and in stores, but spent less per person because of rampant discounting that they've come to demand. Once all the receipts are in, customers look to have spent an average of $289.19 over the four-day weekend, down nearly 3.5% from a year ago, based on a survey by the National Retail Federation. The pressure on prices was especially strong on products like TVs. More than 154 million customers said they had shopped or planned to this, this Thanksgiving weekend, up from 151 million a year ago, according to the survey conduct, conducted Friday and Saturday by the National Retail Federation in Prosper Insights and Analytics. And more were doing it online, as about 99.1 million went to the stores and 108.5 million shopped online. Veterans were protesting at a Western Massachusetts college, facing criticism from around the country for its decision to stop flying U.S. flags after students allegedly burned a flag in protest of Donald Trump's presidential election. Dozens of veterans and other demonstrators held American flags and chanted USA in a Hampshire, Hampshire college in Amherst on Sunday in what organizers called a, quote, peaceful demonstration of freedom, end quote. College officials decided to indefinitely stop flying flags earlier this month after the main flag in the center of campus was burned after students lowered, lowered the banner to half-staff. Officials replaced the flag, but it was lowered again. 
A single Powerball ticket sold in Tennessee is worth $420.9 million, lottery officials announced early Sunday. The six winning numbers were drawn Saturday night. There was no immediate word who owns a ticket or which location sold it. Another ticket with a secondary prize of $2 million was sold in North Carolina, where there were winners in one of $1 million in Pennsylvania and Minnesota. The estimated jackpot is $420.9 million. The lump sum payment before taxes will be more than $243 million. What a difference a week makes. Last week, we were being belted by two feet of lake effect snow, and now some spring-like weather. What can we expect this week? Here's Mr. Charbonneau with the forecast. <laughs> It has felt a little like spring the last couple of days as temperatures above freezing have really melted much of the snow that pounded the area just a week ago. And the rest of that snow, well, that may be gone after the next few days as temperatures will again be above normal today with times of sun and clouds. We'll top off in the mid-40s today before some rain showers move into the area, but most likely after midnight. Now, the wind, the wind... That's going to be pick up, picking up uh, quite a bit overnight with gusts reaching up to 40 miles per hour. This is in advance of a new weather system that will bring with it some wet but mild weather for our Tuesday. We'll see highs near 60 on Tuesday and some showers through most of the early part of the day. Now showers remain possible Tuesday night before some more steady rain arrives for much of the day Wednesday temperatures again are well above normal and the high on Wednesday will be in the mid 50s now we look longer range and we start to cool off again on Thursday and yes we stay wet the next chance for any snow we're looking at maybe next Sunday we're here to keep a watch we hope you have a great day I'm Michael the Buffalo Bills kept their playoff hopes alive squeaking out their sixth win of the season Here's Josh with the news and sports. LaShawn McCoy's touchdown provided the Bills the spark they needed to persevere through a topsy-turvy second half and pull out a 28-21 win over the Jacksonville Jaguars on Sunday. It was McCoy's second touchdown of the game, the longest of his career, and breathed life into a Tyrod Taylor-led offense that had managed just 63 yards of offense in the first half. The win moved Buffalo to 6-5 and five for the season and kept the team in the hunt for a possible wildcard playoff berth. Jason Pierre-Paul returned a fumble 43 yards for a touchdown and recorded three sacks to lead the New York Giants to their sixth straight win, 27-13 over the Cleveland Browns. Eli Manning threw three touchdown passes, two to Odell Beckham Jr., as the Giants extended their longest winning streak since 2008 and moved closer to securing their first playoff berth in five years. The Browns, 0-12, have lost 15 straight dating to last season. The New York Jets, meanwhile, stumbled once again despite playing one of their best games of the season. A late Tom Brady touchdown throw moved the Patriots past the Jets 22-17. to Brady tied Peyton Manning for most wins by a quarterback in NFL history, getting his 200th by throwing a go-ahead 8-yard touchdown pass to Malcolm Mitchell with 1 minute 56 seconds left. It also was the 50th win for Tom Brady after facing a fourth-quarter deficit or tie. The Syracuse Orange basketball team will look to rebound after a bruising loss to South Carolina last Saturday. The Orange hits the road again, this time to Wisconsin, where it will take on the 5-2 Badgers as part of the ACC Big Ten Challenge. The game tips off at 7.30 and can be found on ESPN. That's a look at sports. I'm Josh Yearden. A look at the calendar shows that the National Honor Society is sponsoring a fall blood drive on November 29th in the high school gymnasium. If you would like to donate, please sign up during lunches in the cafeteria with an NHS member or see Mr. Deckman in room 103. Scholarship applications are now available on the district webpage. You can also follow Mexico Scholarships on Twitter or for updates and new applications as they become available. Just search and follow Mexico Scholarships. Thursday, December 1st, city will be closed. Students will need to get a permission slip from the main office and return to be excused during their city class time. That's all for us today. Back here again on Tuesday. For the staff of I and the Tigers News, thanks for joining us. I'm Alexis Fritcher. Have a great day.